Hello everybody, Ben Coley here with the Zen of Ben for you. It's April the 27th, 2015. And uh, the news today, we've got terror in Baltimore. Baltimore is rocking and rolling with civil commotion and riots. Uh, now I can tell you that um, <clears throat> uh, a, couple of, there are a couple of things you're going to have to watch out for with this thing. First of all, uh, it's the whole matter is is completely uh, sad for several reasons. First of all, um, the the police are using uh, tactics and aggressiveness that goes beyond the pale, in my view. Uh, if they couldn't make the arrest on Mr. Gray uh, without hurting him, and they probably should have let him go, and maybe. Maybe they could have caught him another day without harming him. Uh, I hear stories about putting him in leg irons and stuff like that. Uh, they want to haul him away in leg irons. I mean, this is starting to sound like um, you know, the old Roman Empire or something. But uh, something like grandparents, my great 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 parent grandparents would have done something like that to you, I suppose. But uh, I wouldn't do it to you. Anyway, uh, getting serious now. Uh, as you know, I have a very, very strong insurance background, both as an insurance adjuster and as an agent. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I wrote over 10,000 insurance policies. Uh, I'm licensed in all forms of insurance. And I can tell you that the, one of the sad things that could happen here is, is that the, um, the insurance policies for the people who live in this area um, are going to, uh, they're going to, they're not going to renew. Now, unless there are some statutes on the books in Maryland um, uh, forcing the insurance company to renew these policies, these, these uh, underwriters are just going to walk away. And uh, furthermore, I would imagine even if there were rules on the books uh, requiring them to renew these insurance policies on these buildings, uh, what's going to happen is... Uh, that law is going to say mandatory renewal for two or three years, and then and then it's going to be open season for cancellations. Um, my my uh, uh, with the um, deregulation that we've seen in the financial industry, I would venture to say there are no guarantees of renewal on anybody's policy right now. And I'm not licensed in Maryland, so I don't know. Every state's a little bit different. But I would venture to say that. But uh, but that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is. Um, the, the, the store owners, the owners of these properties um, are, are going to be, many of them are going to be denied their claims. When they put the claim in, the insurance adjuster is going to simply come out and say, I'm denying your claim because the policy says that uh, we do not pay a claim based on civil commotion or riot or insurrection. And that's what this appears to be. You know, call it what you will. It's either a civil commotion, or it's a riot, or it's insurrection. Um, I mean, you could almost say it's an act of war. I would say, but uh, uh, we're not in a war zone, though. But uh, I look. Uh, we have to go to, to to analyze any kind of a, a disaster like this. You need to get down to uh, the root of it. Um, you need to find out what is the root cause so that this can be stopped from ever happening again. And uh, now I, I, I saw this myself when I was younger. We had uh, a situation in Newark, New Jersey um, when I was a child, and there were horrible riots. Now, I lived in southern New Jersey in a town called Haddonfield, so I was maybe 60 or 70 miles away from this. So I didn't actually see it while it was happening, but I did see the aftermath, and uh, it was terrible. But um, I, I do know that as an insurance agent, what's going to happen now is that these owners of these buildings are probably not going to get paid. Now, it's possible that some companies may feel bad or sorry, or may, they, maybe they're going to get some kind of a bailout or a subsidy uh, uh, from, this, from the state of Maryland or or they, they may just feel sorry about the whole thing. Believe me, a lot of times when it comes to paying these insurance claims, even, even when the insurance company could legally reject the claim, sometimes as a matter of just trying to be in good faith, uh, they'll pay the claim, or maybe they'll pay half the claim, 
or maybe 25% of it and ask the government to kick in 25% thereby paying total of 50% or something like that, that which leaves a copay of 50% for the owner who would ordinarily have maybe a thousand dollar deductible or a five hundred dollar deductible if he had vandalism. This is not this is not going to be considered ordinary vandalism. Uh, uh, and if it is, I would say then you've got an insurance company that you want to stick to because um, if um, it, there, there's a, a policy coverage that you can buy on your property called vandalism and malicious, malicious mischief, or we call it VM and M in the business, vandalism and malicious mischief. Uh, this this riot, insurrection, or civil commotion, what you're seeing here in Baltimore, goes far beyond that. So. Um, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but um, the, 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 these people that are uh, uh, revolting against the police, I completely understand how angry you are. And there is no excuse for Mr. Gray having died because uh, the, another uh, aspect to the insurance business is the liability side of the insurance business. And while I'm not an attorney, um, we have to study legal liability to be in the insurance business because when we insure someone we're insuring them against lawsuit and so we need to know where lawsuits could come from and so we do need to know quite a bit about the law you'd be surprised that an insurance agent knows so much about the law and uh, we have a uh, uh, legal liability on the part of the police here and in the insurance business you have the three C's you have the care custody and control now now this um, fellow who um, uh, Mr. Gray who who was uh, died or, or died of his injuries or I don't know if he was maybe hit the wrong way by the police officer or he may be injured himself I mean he may have been stoned on some kind of drugs or whatever which is fine with me uh, as long as he's not disorderly in public, but uh, uh, the bottom line is, if, if he's if he's in the care, custody, and control, the three C's. Just remember that uh, once the police have you in their care, custody, and control, they are legally liable and responsible for your well-being. And if anything happens to you while you're in their care, custody, and control, uh, your your family, if you're if you're you're killed, your family could um, sue the city for untold amounts of money. Uh, now the city's going to say he's a bad guy, and they're going to argue their point and say uh, we also have sovereign immunity. Um, we were just trying to make an arrest. Maybe uh, I heard that there perhaps was an arrest warrant out, and so the police were obligated to bring to to arrest him. But but see, I kind of take a little bit of a different angle here. I, I think if if an arrest can't be made without violence, um, a, a reasonable amount of I'm saying if you if you have someone literally going berserk or or running away, it's kind of like a, getting into a car chase down down a highway where you're you know you're a police officer and you're you're just trying to do your job and you're trying to pull somebody over and you, you got a you've got a a guy who you think is bad but but you you, you don't think he's a murderer but you, you know he, he's he's he ran a red light he ran a stop sign and now he sees you chasing him and so he's driving a hundred miles an hour in traffic and there are pedestrians and there maybe school just let out I mean at what point uh, should a police officer say look I cannot pursue this in a, in a high-speed uh, situation because I'm putting everybody around me at risk. Well, what really is the difference between that and uh, taking somebody and arresting them and being rough enough with them that uh, they die of their injury? Where you, if you shoot them, they're going to die, but you could also kill them by punching them in the back really hard and damaging their spine. I don't know if that's what happened, but I, I understand it was a back injury uh, trust me, I know what back injuries are all about. I've got, I've got a bad back myself, and man, it's uh, it's it's hellacious. Uh, you know, it's pretty, it's tough. And 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 uh, I, I was operated on uh, one time, and I, and I was told that I had a a 25% chance of permanent paralysis, and I had to sign off on that, and I had to sign off on 25% chance of death on that operation. Uh, and and uh, now, uh, as I get older, uh, you know, it feels like I may need to have an operation again. And now they're telling me it's a 50% chance uh, of, uh, of uh, complications that could cause paralysis and so forth. So, so I, I, I like to take a lot of aspirin and uh, naproxen. But anyway, getting back to the story here, uh, the point is um, the police are sort of in a 
in, in a tough spot here. And I really, uh, I, I feel bad for the police in a way because, I mean, I know they're just trying to do their job. And I'm trying to, I mean, I can't imagine, I mean, I live in a neighborhood where I, I just can't imagine this happening here. But um, I have been to Baltimore. I'll show you pictures. Um, I sailed my um, sailboat right into the Baltimore Inner Harbor several times. Um, usually would go around the 4th of July because I, I would uh, sail through the Chesapeake Bay and I'd stay overnight and I'd watch the fireworks on the 4th of July and it was always hot as hell. Um, and I, uh, many times I would get off the boat on a dinghy and I would go into town and I know that it, uh, if you get off the waterfront there that it can be a rough neighborhood. But uh, that said, um, being a police officer in the city of Baltimore is a tough job. Look, I understand it is a tough job, and you you've got you you you're kind of in a bad way coming on both both directions. You you sort of need to lay down the law on the one hand, but on the other hand, you have to remember that you are legally responsible. And uh, once you once you collar these people, that I mean, they're in your care, custody, and control. If they die. Um, you are legally responsible, legally liable. So um, we ha so we have many different insurance problems occurring here as this place is being burned down. Um, the, the insurance uh, I just got done looking at the photographs. Now, if I were the insurance adjuster uh, going down there to pay the claim, uh, depending on what my supervisor told me, if they were in a bad mood and just didn't want to pay, I would deny the claim based on the fact that it was civil commotion riot or insurrection and it's written right into the policy now what does this mean for the average people who live there for uh, what's going to happen is if you're renting an apartment uh, you you live in a rental home your rent's going to go up because the landlord the owner of the building is not going to be able to buy insurance anymore and if he can't buy insurance he's going to have to go to a surplus lines carrier or he's going to have to go to some sort of a fair plan many states have what they call a fair plan where if you can't buy insurance in the standard market you would go into a state sponsored fair plan where where the state sort of subsidizes it uh, and bank rolls it if it goes negative and the premiums are much much higher and the coverages are way less and the deductibles are higher and um, with these premiums higher all that's going to do folks is going to make your rents go up and your cost of living is going to just skyrocket and uh, and this senior uh, this new construction that was burned down now the firefighters are saying they don't know what started the fire well you know Look, they, there's a reason they said that. They, the firemen know what to, they know that if they say it was a result of fire uh, caused by a rioter, a civil commotion, uh, or an insurrection, the firemen know that the building won't be paid for by the insurance company, and then that's going to leave a big crater, smoking crater hole right in downtown Baltimore, and no one's going to have the money to rebuild that place because when, if the insurance doesn't pay. Uh, all those people are, are are going to lose out on their future brand new um, uh, apartments that they're that they were building. I mean that building uh, uh, was going to be absolutely beautiful, and now we we've got just a smoking crater there. So uh, you, you've got I to me I mean I put the blame squarely on on, on the uh, the police and on the, uh, the the private protesters and rioters because uh, like I said. Um, the police have a tough job. They were trying to make uh, effect an arrest. Um, we have heard that a lot of times uh, the police will simply uh, tase you or shoot you. I think they were trying as hard as they could to collar this guy without tasing him or shooting him. Uh, and probably they were, they were using physical force. And may, maybe he was hit by a baton or something in his back. Or maybe he, he bumped his back when they were putting him into the car because he was resisting arrest. I mean, if they were putting leg irons on him, I'm starting to think, you know, maybe this guy was uh, uh, resisting arrest or whatever. Uh, look, folks, I'm talking to the rioters right now and the black folks. I, if you look at my website... You're, you're going to see that I'm interested in running for political office. I, I would like to uh, run for president of the United States, and I would, I would love to serve this country as president of the United States. I understand what is causing a lot of this. And a lot of your anger uh, you're taking out because you have idle minds, 
you have a lot of time on your hands, and in many instances, when it comes to living in a place like Baltimore, and I know what Baltimore is like, I've been there myself, right in the heart of downtown Baltimore, like I told you, I know what it's like, um, it's, it, the cost of living is high, and it's high because the cost of insurance is high. It's high because the underwriters, al the underwriters already know that that's a high-tension high area. Anytime you have a lot of density of people, you have the risk of there being violence or a riot or insurrection or vandalism and malicious mischief. Um, crime goes up. Uh, you, you know, covered crime, theft, because you have a lot of people in a small area and it just creates friction. Arguments can break out between people and the next thing you know, um, uh, people are fighting and then the police are called and they have to break it up. And uh, some of these uh, youngsters are very strong and the police, uh, the police have to meet force with force. So uh, uh, I, I'm just, I, 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 I praise the police for not using firearms in this case. It's just so sad that Mr. Gray had to die, but by but but I'm talking to the protesters now for a moment. Please, you've got to stop this aggressiveness, throwing rocks, bottles, and burning these buildings down because the insurance companies will not pay to rebuild your city. You will not have a city when the insurance companies deny these claims. The investors who own these buildings are going to walk away. They're not going to be able to rebuild because if, if they can't get paid insurance, they won't be able to get a mortgage. And if they can't get a mortgage, they're not going to rebuild that their properties. And that's going to leave you guys homeless. Now, uh, many of you may be homeless. Many of you may be living in those uh, empty uh, uh, buildings without doors or without windows illegally and uh, because you just don't have any money and you have nowhere to go. Uh, I understand that that the one of the, which, which brings me to or, uh, item number two. Um, I, I understand that people who live in these cities and people of color and people can just get into a rut, and it's a very very sad situation. And sadly, um, our government doesn't do enough to uh, provide opportunity. Uh, mentorship, one-on-one -on -one mentorship to help bring uh, opportunity to these neighborhoods. And that leaves many, many youths without guidance from an adult, someone who cares. And in many cases, these, uh, these teenagers uh, have, have raised themselves. They, their parents have split up and uh, the court system uh, works in such a way that uh, uh, they go really hard uh, on, on the parents sometimes. And instead of trying to help the families make up, um, they slam the father with a lot of child support. So he runs away and uh, it's just sort of downhill from there. And then the arrest warrant goes out for the father and then he's incarcerated. And then the child grows up without uh, a father. Uh, I, uh, thank God, was raised in a, in a good home, and I had a good father and had no such problems, so I avoided a lot of that. But being an insurance agent, I have seen this happen, and being an insurance agent in downtown Sanford, in many ways, downtown Sanford is like Baltimore. It's on the water. It's in Florida, so it's warmer, but it's on the water. It has, it has a waterfront. Um, African Americans, people of color, and poor people, they fish in the river um, for food to eat. They actually you know, fish for fish and they eat them for, for food um, and, and for pleasure too. But on the other hand, that brings the opportunity. By having the water there, it allows people, when they are unfortunately unemployed, it gives them time to enjoy the waterfront. My recommendation to um, the people who live there and the youth who are, who are, are really are disenfranchised, um, whether it be by something that uh, you sort of brought on yourself, or uh, I, I frankly think that the, uh, the United States is just sort of going down the wrong path and that you really haven't been given a fair shake. This is what I noticed in Sanford, and this is why I took action against Allstate Insurance Company. I mean, they were simply not insuring people because of, they drew a red line around 
the area where my office was, and they said, we don't want to insure anybody there. That's what I'm afraid is going to happen in Baltimore. They're just going to draw a red line around the area. Now, they're not legally allowed to do this, but um, with uh, um, deregulation, no one really stops them anymore. Uh, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, they weren't allowed to do this. Uh, they would charge more money for the higher risk, but um, uh, you're, you're going to see uh, the problem here where uh, these these buildings are not going to be paid for. The damage will not be covered. They'll be they'll be denied claims, and then lawsuits will follow. And then even if a little bit of money is gleaned after many many years of fighting in court, because the landowners are going to have to hire attorneys to sue, and then they're going to argue about whether it was an insurrection or a riot or whether it was just ordinary vandalism and malicious mischief. The point is, in the end, the insurance rates if you can even buy the insurance in Baltimore from now on are going to be really really high and that's going to raise the cost of your rent because the cost of the insurance is packed into the cost of your rent and and God forbid I mean if you own one of these homes now you've lost your investment because the home has been burned down the insurance company doesn't want to pay and uh, your, your, your tenant doesn't have to pay rent anymore because the building has been destroyed so he can legally break the, the lease and leave and uh, and then uh, you won't have the money to rebuild and so and then if you have a mortgage you're going to end up defaulting it may drive you into a bankruptcy and that might affect other properties that you own because many people who have properties in Baltimore they may own properties in Cincinnati or they may own properties in New Jersey uh, they, may, they may own four or five properties because that's what they invested their money in during their working lives. They, they may have purchased real estate so that when they retire, instead of having a 401 retirement plan, they'll have maybe five or six properties that they rent out, and that's how they plan on getting their retirement income. And now, all of a sudden, that's being eradicated. Um, so and even if the insurance companies are kind enough to pay these claims, which in my opinion are deniable, uh, what's going to happen is, uh, the rates are going to be so high that it's going to just drive um, the, the poor people uh, who are already uh, poverty stru struck uh, right out of there. They're just not going to be able to afford to live there anymore. And uh, now I recommend, and I, if you go back and look at my prior um, shows, my prior videos, uh, I've been saying all along that in the United States, the U.S. SBA, the Small Business Administration, is smaller now than it's been uh, probably forever. When I, I was lucky enough that uh, right out of school I was able to get some help from the SBA. It took a year to get the help um, a after I opened my business. and it, it took a couple of years of apprenticeship before I was allowed to open my own shop and sell insurance and real estate. But once I opened... Um, uh, I had to pay for insurance, and it was based on where you live. And if, if, if I were to open up an insurance office in Baltimore, I wouldn't have been able to buy the insurance. Moreover, if I didn't have a few dollars in my pocket, and I didn't have a lot, but I didn't need a lot because I just I had old, old furniture that I didn't pay for that was already in the building that I leased, and the landlord said, look, you can use that old desk. But I... What I did to get out of po what what I, I would have been stuck in poverty, just like the teenagers and the um, the youth in Baltimore, if I hadn't figured out a way of getting out of poverty, and 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 even though I had a wealthy family, uh, believe it or not, I, when I asked um, uh, Bank of Mom and Dad for help, they denied me. Uh, my father said flat out. You can't make a living in the insurance business. Of course, he was an engineer, a physicist, and a scientist, and a radar and ballistic missile engineer. And he 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 wanted me to do that, and uh, so I was taking that at school. And I just uh, you know, as soon as I saw what the real estate business was about, I just didn't want to pursue that because I knew, being a salesman deep in my heart, that I could make a lot of sales and I could make a lot of money, and I could actually make more money than my father was making, although. Um, and not being the same kind of profession, totally different. So to me, like many other wealthy 
um, corporate corporate owners uh, like uh, the owner of Microsoft, Bill Gates, who decided that to, to him college was holding him back. He just wanted to open up a business in his garage and start up the Microsoft Corporation. But um, um, you see, uh, what you people need to do at this point is, first of all, you need to lay down your sticks and stones because rioting, and, and it's called rioting what you're doing, and it's called civil commotion, and uh, it's just going to cause damage that will not be paid for. And so you're not going to end up getting a rebuilt city out of this unless the government steps up and, and wants to repair it. And right now, the government of the United States doesn't have the money. I mean, we're running a deficit right now. So they, they don't have the money to just reach in their pocket and pay billions of dollars to rebuild the damage that you caused in downtown Baltimore. Uh, it, it, just, it would have been better if this hadn't happened in the first place. And it, it should have, frankly, been mitigated by the police. First of all, the police are on the streets every day. They know that these kids are running into trouble, legal trouble. They know that these kids don't have opportunity. Um, the mayor of this city is well aware because he's in communication constantly with the chief of police of the city of Baltimore chief. and the chief of police. And, and, uh, and so they know that these kids just don't have the normal opportunity. Uh, and just like uh, the legal battle that I got into, because I was fighting for the people in Sanford, because what happened to them is when they went to buy their car insurance, because they had a blemish on their credit record, they were being denied car insurance, or they were, they were being offered, if offered car insurance, because they had a slight blemish on their credit record, um, it would harm them to the point that their insurance would be two or three times higher, so they, they wouldn't be able to buy a policy. Then the next thing that would happen would be they, they would drive anyway because they had to go somewhere. Maybe they did have a part-time job or they might not have been a good job, but they had to drive to work. And so then they get pulled over by the police and then they get a ticket for driving on the revoked list. Uh, and then, then, then they don't show up in court because they know they don't have any money and they know if they show up in court, the judge is going to say pay the fine or I'm going to throw you in jail. So what happens is um, a, minor in, a minor inconvenience or an infraction uh, grows into this monstrous debt and or lien that is literally on you and you can't get it off you. I, listen, I know what it's all about. I know what you're facing. I fought the Allstate Insurance Company hard. For years of my life, I lost a tremendous amount of income because the real estate business was booming as I was spending every working hour of my life preparing legal briefs because I was pro se trying to support the people in Sanford who are African Americans for the most part, or they were Latinos, or they were poor white folk, and uh, they they were in a in a situation where Everything that they wanted to do, either they were denied because of where they lived or it would cost more because of where they lived. And their rent was higher because their insurance cost on the building from the landlord was higher. And so they were at a disadvantage right from the beginning. But it's like a chicken and the egg. I mean, my, my parents grew up in South Philly. Now, South Philly is in a way like Baltimore, uh, only it was occupied by Italian immigrants. And uh, one thing about the Italian immigrants is that when, when they came over from Italy, uh, they were really on their best behavior. I mean, they, they were glad to be Americans. Uh, they were so happy to be away from Italy and to become Americans that they went to work and they worked for a, a low wage, they worked long hours, they worked hard. And the big thing if you grew up in an Italian, an Italian family like I did is if you didn't, if you weren't either going to school or had a job, then if you couldn't get a job, then you, you were advised to open up some sort of a business somehow. And uh, usually your family would front you some money to get you going. In my case, uh, uh, my, my family did want to help me because they they knew I did I did have some of my own money because I was uh, as an apprentice I earned some money by selling real estate as a salesman before I became a broker. But the Small Business Administration 
if if I were in charge of the United States right now, I would make sure that the SBA is going full blast and lending money to people to start up businesses so that the youth of the United States has an opportunity. And you have to remember that even though you live in a, a, a tightly knit, a dense community like Baltimore, well, so is New York City. You know, New York City, it's the same thing. I mean, it's densely packed. Um, there is a risk of riot or violence or civil commotion in New York City, but the New Yorkers know that they to, that they behave themselves and they earn extraordinary income. I mean, that's the home of Wall Street. But on the other hand, uh, it's hard to live there because it costs a lot of money. But the behavior is much, much different. The behavior in southern uh, Philadelphia, if you were to go to South Philly, you could walk down any street in South Philly at midnight and not have to worry about being mugged, uh, not have to worry about being bop, bopped on the head. Um, it, it was a safe community, and uh, the neighbors all knew each other, and they made it safe. And the people who lived in that area, if they didn't work for a big company like RCA, or work for the Navy, had a shipyard on the Delaware River, just like the Baltimore. You've got the, uh, the waterfront there, the Baltimore Riverfront. In the city of Philadelphia, the South Philadelphians had the Navy Yard. So many of the men worked in the Navy Yard, and uh, they, they would be, become tradesmen, and they would become welders, and they would work their way up as apprentices. And uh, they were taught, and they went to school, and they learned to trade. Now, I understand getting a job nowadays is tough. We, we have got to, to change that. Um, we, I propose that the United States of America, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to demand that the Fed issue a QE for quantitative, that would be called uh, quantitative easing for, that's what QE for stands for, in case you, you don't understand, if you're watching from Baltimore and you don't understand these, um, these, uh, this terminology. Um, where the, the federal government would actually uh, lend money to the United States of America. The United States of America would buy bonds, thereby borrowing money from the Fed, which is a private institution. And we'll talk about whether that's good or bad later. I already told you that uh, I'm not interested in shutting the Fed down or stopping it or auditing it. Uh, I, I think maybe uh, there needs to be some sort of audit so that no one who owns shares of stock because it's completely secret could could go insane and become a, a godlike figure living on another side of the earth or something but uh, uh, that's what the fat cat rules I guess we're supposed to make, ensure uh, to, to prevent people from borrowing lots of money or being in a position where they have access to huge amounts of money although I disagree with fat cat totally um, I think that there just needs to be morality and good ethics right from the beginning so that we don't need to go to the bank and say, hey, who's got money in your bank? Uh, that, that, that should be a violation of your privacy and therefore under my, uh, my understanding, uh, my, my rules are going to be that if the bank gives out your information to a government servant, then they're going to be subject to a fine and that the servant would be also subject to jail term. Uh, jail sentencing, mandatory jail sentencing. Now, I also know that Baltimore uh, has a history in the inner harbor there of drug dealing. And, uh, and, and what's happening there, what's been happening, is that the youth in Baltimore are just doing anything they can to make a buck so that they can eat. Uh, and I can just see right now the government probably is reining in food stamps. Uh, the, 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 when you don't have a job, um, you have a hard time paying. If you if you have a rental unit, you have a hard time paying your water, so your water gets shut off. And because of the, first of all, I don't think the water should be allowed to be shut off, especially in a dense city. Uh, I think that should be a human right, and uh, you know the government's going to have to figure out its own way of getting water. I mean, for God's sake, it's just water. It shouldn't be. Once the pipes are in, and I think Baltimore has an old enough infrastructure that the pipes are already there. And uh, yeah, the, the cost of water, if there needs to be a cost, should be very, very low. But in any case, shutting the water off should be absolutely out of bounds. Uh, maybe you could put a lien against the building for the small monthly bill that it maybe should cost, which should only be a maintenance fee. 
um, could be picked up at, at the time that the building sells in a, at a future date. But um, I, I, I just know that the youth who live in the inner cities are up against it, and they feel like they're under pressure, so they're doing whatever they can. They're what they call hustling. They're selling drugs on the street for a buck. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, um, they're, being, they're being industrious. Um, in the state of Florida, right in our Constitution, our state Constitution, it says that you ha shall have the right to be industrious. You cannot be penalized for being industrious. Now, of course, they're not talking about being industrious as far as selling drugs go, but I mean, I, if I were in power, I would take it to the next level and I would say you have a right to pursue happiness and the industry part of it would be, um, you know, if you wanted to go into business opening up a pharmacy, uh, you should have some sort of a, a way in so that you could gain a trade. Uh, many of the licenses um, that uh, you need to procure to obtain an occupational license to open up a small business, which really is the answer and the solution to many of these problems. Uh, because once these people who live in Baltimore are able to start their own small business in these buildings that are already there, now I understand they're old, believe me, I know what it's like to, uh, to have a, a business in an old building. Uh, the, only, the only building I ever leased w when I was in in business, whether it be my real estate office or my insurance office, was in an older building, and I had to make repairs to it. So I, I, I really didn't want anything bad to happen to it. And if riot or insurrection struck, even though it wasn't my building, uh, I was responsible either directly or indirectly for the cost to fix that building, whether it's... Uh, uh, um, a problem due to a claim that went unpaid, uh, in which case I could just lose my lease because if the building gets burned down. But the bottom line is, if you take, if you compare Baltimore, uh, what's happening there with the inner city of South uh, Philadelphia, where you have the Italian ethnicity there. Um, the behavior of the people is of paramount importance. That's what is really the difference between living in southern Philadelphia, South Philly, we call it, uh, where you're in an Italian neighborhood and the, the behavior is much different because when you're raised up in an Italian family, uh, your your father is there because they, they don't, the, the, the parents don't divorce very easily. They, they're uh, they're told to stick it out whether they're happy with each other or not for the sake of the children. So the children usually get a better shake with respect to having a parent, uh, parents around to raise them. Uh, my gut feeling is that what's going on in Baltimore right now is that you have kids sort of raising themselves and they get off on the wrong foot and they don't have any support, they don't have any mentorship, um, they, they feel they can make more money by dealing drugs on the street and uh, the police are very good at catching these people and next thing you know they get a criminal record and once they get a criminal record then they can't vote uh, which is bad for for me because I, I would like to help the um, people who have had uh, problems and run-ins with the law because they made a mistake in their life but what happens is once you get that conviction on your record a felony conviction you lose your civil rights and then you can't vote and so for me to come to Baltimore and say, look, I want to help you, I do want to help you. And, and I want you to have the right to vote because then you can vote for hope and you can vote for change. What President Obama promised, hope and change. But um, unfortunately, uh, he did not make the Small Business Administration any bigger. He did not uh, do anything to help. Uh, these people. I, I suppose he might have done one or two things. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But I do know that if you have a mentor, I'm talking about a teacher, not in a necessarily in a formal classroom, but you have an adult who sort of keeps an eye on you as, as a buddy, so like the buddy-buddy network, and someone who can not only keep an eye on you as far as your well-being goes, but also keep an eye on you as far as guiding you into a trade or an occupation or to get a job so that you're 
mind is occupied because the worst thing that can happen is for you to just linger and hanging out on the street corners. It's just going to end up getting you into trouble. I mean, uh, uh, the least bad thing that can happen is that you get into an argument with uh, uh, someone else who's standing there on the corner, and it could be an argument over anything. It could be a fight over a girlfriend or something, and next thing you know, the police are coming and arresting everybody and, and beating you down, and you're getting tased, and one of you may end up getting shot because you're resisting arrest. So uh, it, behavior is very important. So I'm, I'm pleading with the people of Baltimore right now to, to, to listen up here, okay? Your, your futures depend on your behavior. If you lose it right now and you burn the city of Baltimore down, you're, you're just hurting yourself. It, you might as well just be beating on yourself because while it may, you might feel better by throwing that rock at a police officer, but look, you know, first of all, you're not throwing a rock at the police officer that killed Mr. Gray, okay? And so you're throwing a rock probably at the wrong police officer. So, so, and it might make you feel better, like you're getting some payback or something, but look, in the end, this can only be counterproductive. Now, my recommendation is um, find a mentor, um, we, we will rebuild the SBA. I, I promise you that if, if I gain the White House and, and become the president, I will make sure that the SBA, Small Business Administration, is well-funded. And we will mentor you. We will help you in every way possible so that you will have an opportunity. And we have got to refurbish our rules and laws so that they're, they're not, uh, that they don't stack and it's called like in the in the NFL, it's called piling on. You know, the one poor guy gets tackled with the ball, and then uh, thirty other players pile on. I mean, you, you know, uh, the government has got to back off and not pile on with respect to these people who are they really are disenfranchised. I mean, if you were operating like me in Sanford, Florida, trying to sell these people insurance, uh, you'd find out very quickly that uh, that, that they don't have. The opportunity to even buy a car insurance policy like like you do, Mr. Police Officer, and so I'm I'm, I'm talking out to the police officers. The, these these people are they really are uh, in, in a position of disadvantage. They're they're disadvantaged financially, and and I know that it's partly their fault, but it's also partly the system to blame, uh, and it needs to be fixed. But we need to, the first step uh, in this kind of a situation, the person who needs to take the first step are the rioters and the looters and the rock throwers. They have got to lay down their rocks and their sticks. I'm not, I'm not saying that they need to let, you know, uh, never pick them up again or you can't carry a rock with you at your house to protect yourself from a burglar just as if you were in a war or something because... If this were a real war and, and people were fighting each other with guns, the UN would come with the blue helmets and they would plant themselves between the warring parties and uh, they wouldn't be allowed to shoot first. They would only be allowed to defend uh, the party that would be getting annihilated so to, to stop the, the massacre. At this point, the same rules apply, in my view. Um, the, pol the police have got to stop this and... Uh, with the help with the help of the people um, and this will not stop unless the people make a decision that they want to live in a nice community and I, I think Baltimore is a beautiful place you should feel really fortunate that you live on the Baltimore uh, in the Baltimore area because you've got the whole Chesapeake Bay you have the waterfront you could um, uh, once you get yourself going for a couple of hundred dollars, you could buy a kayak and you could enjoy yourself to no end on your days off in the Chesapeake River. I really wish I lived along the water uh, like you do. Uh, someday when I retire um, completely, I'm going to move down uh, so that I can be where I like to be near the water. But you're already there. You've got the waterfront and you should be happy. Um, my advice would be that you've got to stop the violence because these claims are not going to be paid. And if the claims aren't paid, 
no more no more insurance is going to come to you in Baltimore and also it's going to affect your car insurance if those of you who may own a motorcycle or an automobile you're not going to be able to buy car insurance either because remember um, the cars get damaged as well when there's riot or civil commotion or unrest and so the insurance companies are going to come down on you and say hey you're not going to be able to have car insurance so now you're now you're going to lose your driver's license I mean everything bad in the world is going to happen to you. No good can come out of rioting or burning your own places down. What you need to focus on is getting somebody like me in power who can boost the S SBA and get you some startup money so that you can start your own business. And you should start your own business right in Baltimore. Yes, I understand you're in you're living in the inner city, but in the inner city where there's a high density you could open up a restaurant, a little coffee shop, you could specialize in this or that, and uh, you patronize your friend's business, he patronizes your, your business, and you keep the money within the town, within the city. And uh, uh, you, th there are many trades that you can get involved in that uh, you don't have to have a college degree. You can become a real estate agent and you can sell real estate and get a start. But I mean, if you if you get a criminal record out of this by throwing rocks and end up getting arrested, and you will be arrested because the police are videotaping you. Uh, you may be videotaping them, but they're videotaping you. They're going to recognize you and then they're going to come after you. And it might be it take up a week or a month or even a year to catch you, but uh, you're, you're going to end up in trouble over this. So, you know, my advice is always stay on the right side of the law. Uh, now, that said, um, I want the police to back off with shooting people unnecessarily. I mean, we have too many shootings. Now, I, now I understand this wasn't a shooting, but uh, still something happened to Mr. Gray while he was in your care, custody, and control, and he died. And the three C's apply under legal liability. Um, like I said, this is Insurance 101. You don't have to be a lawyer to know this. You need to be an insurance man to know this, or a lawyer. So, uh, look, folks, um, once again, the first thing that needs to happen here is we need to stop the violence. We need to clean up the mess. We need to hope and pray that we can get these insurance claims paid and then get these buildings rebuilt so that we can get you living again. But I'm afraid that what you, after what you've done, all you have done is driven up your own cost to live. So you see, it's every time you, you violate the law, you're, it's just like punching yourself in the face. You're, you're harming your future. Now, now I, I believe that these laws against drugs, the war on drugs has been a total failure. And I know maybe a lot of this started from the war on drugs and a lot of you probably can't vote because you got caught up smoking marijuana or dealing marijuana because you couldn't get a job and you maybe you make a hundred dollars a week money to live on by selling marijuana or whatever on the street. But then uh, one day you get caught and the next thing you know, look, uh, I'm going to do away with all of those drug rules right off the get-go. But but on the other hand, folks, at this point, while those laws are in force, don't get in any more trouble. I'm also going to make sure that your your civil rights are restored. Uh, the fact that you're arrested on a drug offense and you land in prison, uh, even if you it's a serious drug offense and it's a felony, um, I'm going to make sure that there is a, an easy pathway to restore your civil rights so that you can vote. You need to be able to vote your own leaders in because if you can't vote for your, your, your leaders in, then, well, then first of all, you wouldn't be able to vote for me if you couldn't vote, and uh, that wouldn't help me any. And, and I'm all about helping you and bringing opportunity your way. Uh, I can tell you and show you how I started out with, with little or no money it is possible to work your way up. Uh, and I don't have tons of money right now to run a campaign. I mean, I got wiped out when the 2007-2008 uh, bubble blew, being in the real estate business. And uh, I, I got wiped out. My real estate company had to close. I know what tough times are like. Uh, I couldn't pay, uh, had a hard time paying my water bill. 
Uh, I think the water costs too much. It's sixty dollars a month to me. It, that, to me, that's too much. I mean, they dig it out of the ground for free. But but getting back to the matter at hand here, at this time, I am pleading with you to put your stones and rocks down, walk home, be a man, and suck it up, and just hope and pray uh, that you don't get in any kind of uh, criminal record over this or an additional criminal record. Um, because I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, even if that should happen, that you're going to have your rights restored. But right now, um, without somebody like me in power, uh, you're not going to have your civil rights restored. And you're not going to be able to vote for your own mayor. Uh, and if you can't vote for your own mayor, then you have... Uh, a uh, little control over who are going to be the city councilmen and and what's going and how the city is going to be constructed and how this how the school is going to run or whether or not there's going to be a vocational college available. I mean, all these things are revolving around money uh, that comes from the government and that is derived by politicians who are uh, who know how to who to how to get this money and put these projects together, which in turn is going to give you a chance to apprentice and get a good job. And once you get a good job, um, your life is going to change 360 degrees. But until then, you need to focus on behaving yourself and not burning. You're burning your own homes down, folks. If you're burning the house down the street, and you're like, well, this is not my house. And you're throwing a rock through uh, the window of a house that's three blocks away, figuring that that's not going to harm you. That's not true. Uh, the way the insurance works is everybody within miles of that area is going to be redlined out on the rates and the availability of insurance. And that will drive up the cost of your living. Uh, you're going to be driving yourself out of your own neighborhoods. And someday you're going to want to open up a business. And I can't think of a better place of opening up a small business than Baltimore. You could do a light industrial business. We're going to reindustrialize the United States. If I get in power, I will open the SBA up big enough that we will reindustrialize the United States. And that includes the city of Baltimore. Uh, the city of Baltimore has many big buildings, big old buildings that could be used as warehouses and they could be used as light industrial buildings to build things like solar panels with modern new equipment that can build these things uh, very quickly and you could become a technician or a worker in these plants earning a decent wage and live in Baltimore but the important thing is you need to take a cue from how the Italians behave in South Philadelphia the, the main thing is they behave themselves they have a work ethic they have morals and ethics. They, they will not burn their own communities down like what you guys are doing right now. And I know you're angry. I mean, look, nobody's angry that I am that the police have somehow, uh, that someone has died in police custody. It certainly doesn't look good on the police. But trust me, they, uh, the family can sue the police under the care, custody, and control. So... That is a matter for them, and the police will suffer. And and but then the other sad part about it is, um, the police department won't be able to buy insurance either because no insurance company is going to want to insure the city. The actual city won't be able to buy insurance to cover its police force. And so you see, everything that you're doing to damage the city is going to come back, and it's just going to harm you more. It's going to harm you directly because you're going to end up with a criminal record because you're going to get tracked down by the police anyway. And frankly, I'd want you to be caught if you're burning the city down. Uh, don't, don't think that I'm a libertarian to the point where I'm, I'm saying it's okay and you can go ahead and blow off some steam. No, no. Uh, I, I believe in uh, uh, catching you. And then we're going to find out you know, what's on your mind and what makes you tick and we're going to try to fix you. But throwing stones and throwing rocks will get you jail term if I'm the president. You're going to be in jail for a while, and then you're going to be released, and you're going to have another chance. And if it happens again, uh, you're going to get a harsher penalty. And if it happens again, that's it. We just don't need you. We'll throw you in prison for the rest of your life. I don't care. But um, at this point, uh, like I said, take a cue. 
you know, if you have some time, um, do some research into South Philadelphia and the waterfront district of Philadelphia and around where the Liberty Bell, or where I was born. I was born right around the corner from the Liberty Bell. Uh, I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the Founding Fathers. and they, I mean, every word in that Constitution needs to be followed. Even though we live in a modern society and we have Internet now, we have things that the Founding Fathers never would have dreamed of. Um, so when politicians say, oh, I don't, I don't think that uh, the Constitution pertains anymore because the Founding Fathers didn't know that we were going to have an Internet and that people were going to be able to talk and therefore they might form some sort of a militia or something. Well, I mean, the Founding Fathers mentioned militia anyway, but uh, the current politicians are going to say that there are so many things that are different, like you know, guns being more powerful uh, and having more firepower, so it's more dangerous if someone should get angry. And and have le even legal possession of a firearm. So, uh, but I do believe in your right to have and bear arms. But I I I'm telling you, it all revolves around your behavior. It's your behavior. Okay, you are going to be bringing on hell yourself. That's what this is all about. This is about your future. This is about where you live. This this little town called Baltimore is your home. And if you burn it down, folks, you're burning down your own home. And you're, you're just damaging yourself. Now, I'm all about helping you. But, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a limit to how far I'm willing to go as a politician. Um, if, if, if we can't straighten you out, you're going to end up in jail for a long time. I mean, because it's not fair to, you, to the other people who live in Baltimore who want to have a nice community and who do want to open up a business. I mean, that CVS pharmacy in Baltimore, you know, that the place got firebombed. You know, and who's going to pay for the damage on that? The insurance company doesn't want to pay. It's arson. And riot, as a result of riot and insurrection and, and uh, civil commotion and insurrection and riot. So, um, look, you know, the, the investors who are investing in the town, the, the town that you live in, that's your home. You should you should try to you should paint your front door, you should paint the trim around your windows, you should keep your streets free and clear of litter. You need to make it as nice as you can. I know. Look, you're not living in, uh, you know, uh, Hollywood. I understand that, but neither were my grandparents when they lived in South Philly. But it still was a good lifestyle because even though the homes were right next to each other, there was a high density there, and once in a while there was friction, or even was a fist fight once in a while, it always was over quick and it was settled and the police uh, just, you know, there was minimal police interference and no one resorted to throwing rocks through windows and burning buildings down. Because you know what? The Italians knew that even though they lived in a low a low income area, because those homes were inexpensive, because they were row homes, they weren't single family homes in the burbs that would have cost more. They didn't have garages. Many of them didn't have cars because they couldn't afford it. They walked to work. And they might have worked in downtown Philly or that there was a subway. But they knew that that was where they lived. That was their home. And they didn't want to bring, they didn't want to turn their own home into a battlefield. It, you're not helping yourself by burning your buildings down and by throwing rocks at the police. All you're, all you're going to do is gain a criminal record and you're going to end up in prison. Then you're not going to be able to vote. You're going to lose your freedom. I mean, it's just going to be downhill from there. I'm going to do everything I can to, to, Try to understand your problems. And I think I know what they are better than anybody else running for president. Don't vote for the existing politicians that are in power now, okay, because you're just going to get more of the same. I will give you an opportunity to get a job. I will give you that mentor that you need. I will give you that startup cash so that you want, once you're ready for it so that you can start up a building. Uh, get, you can start up a business in one of those 
uh, old buildings in downtown Baltimore. And I will make sure that it's easy to get an occupational license and it's not going to be a gigantic fee that's unaffordable by people who are downtrodden like you are right now. I understand you guys are being, you guys are being disenfranchised. I totally get it. Okay, the election is coming up, and if, if I can win this thing, and I'm hoping that you can help support me, if I can win this thing, folks, I promise you, you're going to have opportunity. You're going to have the chance to open up a business, to have a, to have a decent job. Now, I don't care if it's downtown Baltimore. Downtown Baltimore is beautiful. You're on the water. You've got the Chesapeake Bay. You should be happy there. You should be happy to, to live there and have a home. I'm going to work things out where the water bill is going to be very low. I'm not going to let the oligarchs charge you a fortune for water. I'm not going to allow the electric company to charge you a lot of money for your electricity so it gets shut off. They're just not going to allow them to do, to do that. Uh, the cost of living is going to come down. But the cost of insurance is directly related to how much it costs to fix that building. So oligarch or not oligarch, um, Billionaire or not billionaire, whatever it costs to fix the damage that you're doing is going to have to be paid out by the person who owns the building because I'm afraid that these insurance companies are going to deny the claims. And they're going to be legally allowed to deny the claims. So please, settle down. Uh, I may even come up and talk to you. I'll come up and talk to you and bring a bullhorn and uh, tell you what my plan is. I'd like to shake some of your hands. Uh, I'm really sorry about what happened. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit pissed off at the cops right now for, for uh, harming this fella. And for all I know, maybe his back was already injured before you got him. I don't know. I'm not pressing judgment on you. I do know that uh, of late the police do have a bad record of um, harming people or using excessive force. And, uh, and th this guy shouldn't have died, I don't think, even if he had back problems. Um, but uh, how it happened, I don't know. I'm not sure how it went down, so I don't want to prejudge. But I, what I will prejudge is what I did see with my own two eyes. And I did see the damage, and I did see the rock throwers and, and the, uh, the fire starters. And listen, guys, you're not behaving yourselves. You have a legitimate beef, I understand. You, you are and have been disenfranchised. You do not have the same opportunity as someone who comes out of the starting box in a wealthy family and uh, where, where the children are given a lot of money to, to, to start up uh, their own gig uh, or to, to help them find a job that pays a decent middle wage or above average or, or, or a, a decent wage, even if it's a part-time job. The bottom line is you, you have been, and I understand, and I agree that you, many of you, not all of you, I'm sure, but many of you have been disenfranchised. And that's got to stop, just like the police violence has to stop. Everybody has got to stop and take a deep breath. And I strongly urge you guys to just stop damaging your own neighborhood. This is where you live. This is your home. Hurling rocks at the police is damaging your property. Any rock that misses hitting a policeman on, on his head is going to uh, go through a window that's not going to be paid for to be fixed. And it's going to take that much longer to fix the neighborhood. Or it's going to just bring more police down on you because, frankly, uh, some of you probably are over the top and do need to be uh, arrested by the police. And uh, so, look, it's not going to help your cause to throw rocks and cause problems. What will help you the most is helping me to get elected as the president. And I will level the playing field. I promise you, you will have opportunity if I'm elected as president. You will have startup cash available to you through a QE4 program that will start up via the SBA and the QE4 and the Fed. You will have a mentor and you will have guidance, and you will be allowed to open up a business. It will not cost you an arm and a leg, and you will have support and help, and you will not be oppressed and uh, 
put in a in a little box where you're just being piled on by infraction ver, uh, an infraction infraction where the law just comes down on you to the point where there's you you just have no hope. I understand the situation you're in. You 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 get an infraction and it might not be your fault because you don't have a job and you can't afford something so you drive a car you, where you shouldn't have it so and it was the whole thing was minor but it blew out of proportion because it's all about the money isn't it next thing you know you get in trouble with the police and you don't have the money to pay the fine and then you get in trouble because you didn't pay the fine and then it, there there's piling on and piling on by the government look folks it has to stop. I will stop it. I will bring. I will reindustrialize this country so that everyone who wants a job will have a job. And not only that, but if you have a job, even if it's a part-time job or a low-pay job, it will be a livable wage. And you're going to have pride of ownership when you live in your house, even if it's in Baltimore, because you've got the Baltimore Inner Harbor there. One of the most beautiful places in the, uh, to, to go sailing. Sailors, sailors from all around the world come to your city all the time to the waterfront in Baltimore because it's beautiful. You've got the National Sea Aquarium there. I, I think it's still there. Uh, you've got the uh, the mall. Look, you know the, these are um, these are beautiful places where sailors from around the world come to visit, and you you are lucky enough to live there don't burn the city down it's not helping your cause at all you're you're harming yourself all right i've repeated myself over and over again so um i also want to remind the police look you know and, and uh, at some point you're going to have to back off as well and recognize that these people they they don't have a job like you do they don't get a paycheck like you do they don't get benefits like you do they don't have uh, a lawyer, and, you know, if you're a police officer and you have a, a dispute with your with your tenant, even if you're buying a house, you have free legal counsel because you have the police union there that, that it give, provides you all kinds of extra benefits, and you have medical care. Uh, a lot of these kids don't have medical care, and uh, so maybe they smoke pot because their 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 eyes have glaucoma, or it makes them feel better, and they don't have access to a doctor or to or to mental help, and they have a lot of mental issues, and they don't have anyone to talk to, and there's no mentorship. Look, folks, there are a lot of problems. I blame this on the government. I blame this on the current administration, and I blame some of it on the police, and I blame uh, some of it on the actual rioters. And I'm serious, folks. I want you guys to lay your sticks and stones down. I mean, it's time to it's time to make up now, and uh, uh, I I I will get your civil rights back. You will have the right to vote. You will not have the government and the police coming down on you with me as your president. You will have your civil rights. You will be able to walk down the sidewalk without being uh, shaken down by the police because you'll have your civil rights. They won't be able to shake you down. They won't be able to stop you. They won't be able to come into your house without a warrant. They won't be able to tap your telephone. All the bad things that they're doing to you now, they won't be able to do. Once I'm the president and I reinstitute re the Constitution, restore the Constitution back to the way the Founding Fathers uh, intended it to be. But on the other hand, when I was young, the Constitution was working fine not like it is now and two things happen it's like the tale of two cities the people in Newark New Jersey went berserk and they had a riot and they damaged their own city thus giving them nowhere to live but the Italians living in South Philly had pride of ownership obeyed the law had morals and ethics and that pride of ownership extended to you know whose front door was the fanciest? Who kept their windows the cleanest? Were you going to school? Were you learning a trade? Even if you weren't out of school yet, the fact that you were in school made you proud. And look, folks, you know, you need at some point you need to take responsibility for the damage that you're bringing on yourself. Okay, the, the something bad happened here. And the, the police, the police are getting and have been getting, and I believe are being way too aggressive. Like I said, I will fix that. But it's up to you to fix your own 
town. I mean, that you you live there, folks. That's your city. You live on those streets. Now you're going to be you're going to just be smelling that, you know. I mean, I adjusted a lot of fire claims, and I know what the smell is. It's going to smell like burning wood for a year. It's going to smell in that neighborhood. Look, folks, please calm down. All right, I'll try and come and visit you and talk to you, and and we'll make a plan. And it may take a it may take a while because the elections aren't coming. And even if I if I get lucky and and you guys help me and back me. Um, uh, maybe a lot of you can help me, uh, you know, work the phones because I, I need people to work the phones. Uh, we'll, we'll try to figure something out, but don't damage your own neighborhood. It's counterproductive to what you're, what you really want. What you want is a level playing field. You want fairness. You want a fair opportunity. You want a chance to make it, a chance to be your own business owner or a chance to get a decent paying job. I understand. I get it. But this is not the way to do it. Okay, folks. Thanks so much for listening. All right. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.